I am back with another interview with another lovely woman who delayed motherhood until her 30s. And this lovely interviewee is one of my dearest friends, Christina. She had her children at 34, 35, and 37. I know that you're going to love this interview, so let's dive right into it. Hi, Christina. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hello, Kendra. <laughs> so I need to just go ahead and apologize to anyone who's watching because Christina is one of my dearest, dearest, dearest friends. There's a really good chance that you'll hear a lot of giggles, some shenanigans and tomfoolery, but we'll try to play it straight. So, okay, Christina, go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us all about who you are. Of course. Well, hi, everyone. I am Christina. I am a mother of three beautiful children, um, girl, boy, girl. Um, they are my life. They are my joy. And um, I'm also a working mother, um, which is, you know, fun and hard, <laughs> but it's a part of life. So um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it, Christina, in a nutshell. And there's so much more to say about who you are. Like you're just one of the loveliest, kindest, bubbliest, most compassionate people. And like, just funny without trying to be funny like humor just emits from you and it, I find that it puts a lot of people at ease because I feel good oh. around you and people feel good around you so oh I think you well I try I try you know I'm <laughs> the person that talks to the person in the elevator and I stand by myself like hi <laughs> and then hit him with my dad joke and keep it moving you are not your <laughs> So I would love to start by talking a little bit about what your preconception experience looked like. Like how old were you when you started first trying to conceive your first child? Let's see. So I was probably 32. Yes, 32. Definitely past 30 because I got married when I turned 30. And then after a year being married, um, thought about, okay, well, let's have a family, start a family. And so definitely probably around 32, we like were actively most likely trying to conceive. So yeah, definitely past 30. <laughs> gotcha. So 32 for the first child and for your second child? Um, so Jeffrey, <laughs> surprise baby, anyway, uh, he was, or I was, let's see, because I was Okay, I gotta think about this. I gotta think about this because Kendi's five. So he's on. So thirty. It was right after Mackenzie, actually. So Mackenzie was born in twenty eighteen. Jeffrey was born in twenty nineteen. So um, just a year apart. So thirty three, thirty four, in that area. Yep. Okay. And our final and then, little bundle of joy. Now Trinity, yes, that was. Uh, whoo, hey, now I was thirty seven having her. Um, so yeah, fun times. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So you started yeah. with our first little bundle of joy when you were around 32 and how long after trying did you conceive her? Oh, okay. So, um, how long after? So she, um, like a, probably a year, a year after, because I was 33 when I had Mackenzie. Definitely know that because she was born in April. My birthday was in March. So that's how I remember that. <laughs> I remember so. holding her when I was, when she was like six weeks old and I was yeah. frightened. I was like, I cannot drop this child. <laughs> I think we were like, at a park in the Bronx yes. and it was just yes. concrete and I was like I, there's no grass to even drop her into <laughs> <laughs> oh then we were on a park bench and I was just like here hold my baby <laughs> oh yeah I didn't drop her though no you didn't and I wouldn't have let you I would have been like oh I got her <laughs> and she's fantastic <gasps> Did you have any sort of like fears or concerns when you were trying to conceive? It's really common for people who are like, you know, older than 30 to be a little bit nervous about it. So did you have any fears or concerns? Oh, definitely. Um, I had, um, because, you know, Google is not your friend when you're over 30 and looking at like, oh, what is it like to have a child after 30? And then you see all these things. So your, your kid could have, and there's a slew of things. And I think just reading that, um, just puts that hint of fear, like, oh my goodness, you know, what's she going to be like? Am I going to have these issues and so on and so forth? Um, but, you know, then you kind of realize that, okay, well, you know, she's meant to, you know, she's going to come, she's going to be meant to be here and everything will be perfect, perfectly fine. And it was a great and 
easy somewhat delivery. <laughs> Ooh, you said somewhat. What, what's yeah. the somewhat? The, the somewhat is um, because um, all my children were delivered via cesarean. So the most, for me, the most painful part is before the kid actually comes out with them, the needles and, you know, it's a procedure that you're having done. And it's not, you know, some people unfortunately say it's the easy way out and it's not an easy way out. Oh yeah. It's just nothing easy about laying there and you literally at least for me it felt like someone was like sawing apart my body and then they're taking a human and all my kids were over eight pounds out of your body <laughs> and you're just like oh and you can't feel anything really at all at least you shouldn't and so just all of that um easy in terms of okay it was scheduled I know when my kids were coming but not easy in terms of the healing process and just getting ready for that and walking into the room and you see all these people with their gloves on and like yeah here's a huge needle get ready <laughs> so yeah it's definitely a little 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 scary at times but I made it through <laughs> Dude, I have no idea where people got the idea that it was easier it may be a different route but it's yeah. not an easier route at oh, all like there's nothing oh, easy yeah. about layers of your body being yes <laughs> yes yes and someone's like oh like yeah well you and then you have the whole people oh you but you didn't birth your child it's like no look look my child is alive and in this world so I birthed that baby I may may not have gone a different just like you said it went a different route it's just this way instead of that way <laughs> they're still <I> here <laughs> so. absolutely and we're so happy they're here because they yes. are just the loveliest little little buggers. <laughs> my little squad, my little A squad. That's what I call them. I got a whole team. <laughs> oh, I love it. So mostly your fears and concerns came from Google. Were there yes. any other reasons that maybe you were a little bit nervous or were there other people in your ear or did you have a pretty supportive community? I actually had a supportive community. I think everyone was like, happy they're like oh finally and I'm like wait a minute I didn't realize I was on your timetable um but <laughs> um but for the most part when you know pregnant with Mackenzie they were like oh yay you know and then I think one person was like oh are you nervous because you know you are over 30 and I think medically you're considered uh, what's the word um um there's a word for us uh, high risk or um just another word I can't think of right now but where you're just like oh okay like you're like past the prime in terms of having the children I'm just like what who's who set that prime bar <laughs> it's like you know like I'm good and obviously yeah still going because I had two more closer to my 40s so it's kind of just like and everyone's doing just fine so yep Yep, yep, yep. Supportive system makes all the difference having people in your corner and the right people. You know, even if it's just one person, just talk to that one person. It makes all the difference. So it could could be more people saying this, but that one person that's like, hey, I'm here with you. That's all that I needed. So and I had that. <laughs> Definitely this video is going to serve as that for someone who maybe doesn't have that around them, right? Like you can always watch this video and see that Christina did it three times um, <laughs> and her children are doing well and she's doing well. So I love that you were here sharing that and being that for someone else who maybe doesn't have that in their immediate environment. So awesome. It is important to have people who can speak to a different reality and what you said about like who set the bar that this was the prime age. I often think we need to reevaluate that because yes. I'm assuming that came from a time when, you know, like people weren't living to 90, like what midlife was, was very different. <laughs> yes. I agree with that hundred percent because so many things, and especially in medicine, some things are like outdated or need to be updated because things have changed now. So if someone's saying now, like, you know, to have a kid pass, God forbid, if everyone passed 35, you're just like, oh no, it's like, no, it's, it's, it's okay now because life is different now. Women are doing different things, careers, schools, or just whenever they feel that they're ready to have them. So you shouldn't be penalized or feel judged because you choose to have a child past the prime age. I definitely, if I was in my twenties, popping out babies mm, for me, <laughs> that's the, <laughs> for me. It just wouldn't, that wasn't a good time in my life that I should have been having children. <laughs> <laughs> so 
still trying to figure out life yourself for me, but everyone's different. <laughs> I would have more like, what were the benefits of waiting until you were in your thirties to conceive? I think for, for, again, for me, just, just having a little bit more knowledge, a little bit more maturity. Um, also oh, for big, the biggest thing, not being married yet, um, and making sure you're with the right person. Um, and I think all that, sometimes you develop later on and sometimes it happens before. I mean, sometimes people meet them younger or meet who, who um, their partner is going to be earlier on in life. And that's great for me. It wasn't until I was 30. <laughs> so it's just, and I just think just also too, just where I was just everywhere in my life, just um, mentally, physically, spiritually, everywhere. That was a good, it was a good age for me, 30, 30. <laughs> I love that. You spoke to something that I speak about a lot on this channel is that like you're preparing your life to bring a new life into it, right? Like it's not yeah. just about getting a baby or having a baby. It's like, what kind of life are you setting up for that child? Right? Because there's a, I get a sense of like stewardship or responsibility for their life. And so it's not about what I'm getting. It's about what I'm going to have to give for the next 18 plus years. So the idea yes. of like your life was ready for this is a really beautiful thing to hear. Yeah, you have to really think about, um, again, as being as prepared as you can be. Of course, once the child comes, all the stuff you read, I tell you, it's good to read them, but every child is different and that every it's just it's hilarious it's like oh this was in chapter five We're, I, I don't know if she would be doing this but a lot of things have a part to play like you know now I live in a different state I live in New Jersey now and but all this was thought out because now you're thinking about okay the school system what kind of schools do you want your children to go to um now working remotely you know will that work with my children's schedule what where are you in your career um you know well, you may have to take a step back because you need to be more flexible with your children. For me personally, I had to come down from a leadership role and be a little bit more, take a step back for like a better word because my children go to three different places. So I needed the flexibility and I couldn't afford that being in a leadership role. It doesn't mean it's not gonna happen later on, but you have to recognize that within yourself and be like, all right, it doesn't mean the end of the world. I just have to take a step back now because my children are priority. And I never would have thought I would be kind of making my career and all these moves based on my children. But everything I do is for them. All, everything I do is for them. So, and you realize that it's not even like a second thought. It's just like, okay, all right, well, will this benefit my children? Will this, will this school, will these, this food, everything revolves around my children. <laughs> yeah oh you touched on so many good things there and so many things that I'm just grateful that you were willing to share so I want to go back a little bit we talked about uh the idea of a high-risk pregnancy being yes. an automatic um, label that you receive when you're yes. 35 or older or the dreaded term which I think they may have retired I hope they have they need to if they haven't geriatric pregnancy that's the word that's how I could remember I was like wait because I was like I know what's worth that was like geriatric sorry <laughs> <laughs> what was that like to receive that label yeah at first like you're like you know especially if, if you have healthcare knowledge you're just like geriatric I'm thinking well that's 75 or 65 I don't know I was like who Hey, if you were 60 popping out babies, God bless you. But I was like, there's nothing geriatric about all this. Um, but <laughs> you know, it really is it's shocking that um to hear that and then also being a woman of color, they're like, okay, well, you know, are you you know, I think one person said, Oh, are you sure? Sure about what? I'm having, you know, this child is she's coming. <laughs> and I think it, the initial response is shock that again, being labeled and having that age. And again, who set that age limit and then just overcoming that and not realizing that, hey, those could be, maybe there are some stats, maybe there are a little bit of facts, but every, but not every woman is the same. Everyone's journey is completely different. So to be lumped into one category, I just don't feel it's fair for women that are trying to conceive or are, con you know, in that process and to kind of put into a bucket of like, all right, well, you're, 
high risk, you're geriatric. And it's like, well, wait a minute, I'm still a woman. I'm having a child. Why is all that not being considered first in my age? So, wasn't a fan. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm not a fan either. <laughs> There's such a big difference too, between chronological age and biological age, right? Like, yes, we can see it when we look at people, like some people age a little differently than yeah. other people. And <laughs> I imagine that what you see on the outside is also what is occurring on the inside. And I don't think that that always is taken to taken into account. It's like, we all age at a different rate. And Yes, there are stats that say when I reach this number, maybe I'm more likely to be like the women who are also in the same age bracket, but I might not be. I may yeah. have lived a very different life. So Perfect. I always want to toss out there. Remember that biological age is different than chronological age. So that's right. Yeah. How did you counter that narrative? How did you counter those labels that were placed on you? Like, where did you turn to, to still feel confident and good about what you were doing? Um, for me personally, I turned to my good, my good book, my Bible, because there's plenty of examples in there where, you know, past the prime and, um, give, having babies at 99 years old plus, and just realizing that, hey, you know, there's a purpose, you know, you have a, um, every child has a purpose and you have a purpose to bring that child, you know, in, into life. So that was my, my go-to, just re remembering what God said about children and being a mother and all that good stuff. So that's what kept me going. And again, having a good support system, just doing proper research. Don't, you know, stop on the first tab you see on the Google, like look to see who you could like supportive groups and just reach out to other people. Cause you'd be surprised that there was one person I was surprised that she had a one, uh, a woman, she had a baby in her past her forties and I had no idea. And so it was just good to kind of talk and connect and kind of see similarities. And, you know, even afterwards, after you have the child, how our body recovers differently, you know, than someone maybe at a younger age, but it's still recovering just at a at a different pace sometimes <laughs> and it's okay it's okay to not be to have the snap back right away I tell people like you know we, what we see in out there on social media it's not everyone's reality and you might not have resources to do that so you just do the best that you can and as long as you try that's all that's it <laughs> I love that that's such good stuff like you wrap that up so well you gave so much like good information you gave you know what they're hearing around them and I think having any sort of resource that you can turn to that says something different than maybe what you're hearing um, can be beneficial so for you that was the bible for other people it might be the Torah or the Quran I don't know what it might be it might be this video I don't know but the importance of remembering that that's what you may read or what you may hear is only one side and that there's always another side to look to and to look at. And I have to say this because I feel like someone may think it may say it that like, oh, that's just like toxic positivity. N no, <laughs> it's just like the truth of life. There are different ways of looking at all things. So I just want that's to right. say that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. Now, what advice would you give like 31 year old Christina? So that was before you actively started trying to conceive. What advice would you give her? Let's see. I would give her advice on choosing better food options, um, eating as healthy as you could be. That's probably the biggest thing because I think, um, you know, when you hear the term like, okay, well, you have to eat better or, you know, you got to improve. It's like, okay, well, what does that look like? And does it mean I have to like, you know, get rid of all my snacks, start eating carrots for the rest of my life? And it's just like, no, you could just take small steps and overall that will affect how, you know, how you feel carrying your child and during the pregnancy and even afterwards, because I definitely ate differently with the first child than you do with your second and your third. You kind of just, it's almost a mind that like, okay, well, I'll just eat what I want, but it does affect you, your mood, the behavior and all that. So I think the first one, all the, the new moms out there, you're just like, okay, I want to make sure I eat, have the smoothie and have this and have this, because this is going to help this. 
And then your second one, you're like, look, just give me that. Give me them fries. Give me them chips. I don't care. <laughs> but the 31 year old me before, I would definitely say just to um, eat, eat healthy at your own pace and to just, um, yeah, just ha have that support system maybe even early. And then don't let people, don't let people tell you what, like when you should have your child. Because I feel like, especially if you're over 30 and everyone's like, oh, and if you just get married, when you're having kids, that's not your business. And I feel like, <laughs> I think as soon as it won't, if, if people know what your age is and everyone's kind of already rushing to kind of just tell you what to do and just kind of just like, don't listen to, because it could kind of get in your ear like, well, yeah, you're right. I am, you know, 31. I should have, I should be on my third kid by now, according to certain people, but you know, that wasn't me. So <laughs> Oh, that's some just good advice. Tone, tune them out. Tune them out. <laughs> Absolutely. So tune out the noise. <laughs> yep. Have a good support system and eat well in a balanced way that feels good and sustainable for you. Like yes. no extremes on either side. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I love that. Thank you, my friend. Any last words of advice, encouragement, or hope that you would like to leave with those who are watching? Uh, I would like to tell them someone just just stay the course just stay stay positive um again support system um your time will be your time and it will all work out in the end wasn't she lovely she's so fantastic she is an absolutely amazing human i just wanted to pop in at the end to encourage you to watch deb's interview who had her children at 37 and 40 if you haven't already you can find the interview link in the description box below I like where this is going. It seems like it's becoming a series. And if you're into it, let me know. Like this video, leave a comment, send me a message, whatever. Just let me know if this is something you'd like me to keep going with. Enjoy the rest of your week. Be well and bye for now.